Welcome to the CPD Revalidation Wound Club Online Education Module on Local Infection and Sepsis Strategy in Clinical Practice, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around infection management. My name is Danielle Briggs and I'm a Complex Wound Specialist here at Smith & Nephew. Today we will be discussing the identification and management of sepsis in clinical practice. By the end of this module, you should be able to describe a brief history of sepsis, including steps taken in the UK in recent years to raise awareness of the disease, the prevalence of sepsis globally and in the UK, the main risk factors and red flags that raise a strong suspicion of sepsis, how to manage people with suspected sepsis using protocols like the sepsis 6, why people with chronic wounds are at risk of sepsis and what you can do about it, and where to find more detailed information. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that arises when the body's response to an infection causes it to attack its own tissues and organs. In sepsis, a patient's immune system goes into overdrive, setting off a series of reactions, including widespread inflammation. This can cause a significant decrease in blood pressure, reducing the blood supply to vital organs and starving them of oxygen. Sepsis can lead to multiple organ failure and death, especially if not recognised early and treated quickly. Over the last 20 years in the UK, there has been a growing awareness of sepsis as a cause of preventable mortality and morbidity. Some of the steps taken to address this are shown in this slide. In 2004, the Surviving Sepsis Campaign was set up, becoming the UK Sepsis Trust in 2010. In 2015, the first Sepsis Action Plan was published by the NHS, followed in 2016 by the first NICE guidelines describing the recognition, diagnosis and early management of sepsis. On a global level in 2017, the World Health Organization adopted a resolution to improve the prevention, diagnosis and management of sepsis. This resolution marked a new era in the global fight against sepsis and gave fresh impetus to experts in the UK to continue to develop a national action plan. New initiatives in the UK included implementing sepsis within the CCG Improvement Assessment Framework in 2017 and 2018. In 2017, the Royal College of Physicians also launched a modified version of the National Early Warning Score, known as NEWS2. This is a tool used to monitor patients in hospital and is used as an early warning system to spot patients at risk of rapid deterioration. Although it has been designed to identify deterioration from any cause, it has also been very useful in identifying deterioration from sepsis. So here in the UK, we have at our disposal a selection of tools designed to improve the early detection of sepsis. The global burden of sepsis is staggering. Every year, 49 million people around the globe develop sepsis and the disease claims 11 million lives. That is the equivalent of one death caused by sepsis every three seconds. In the UK alone, every year, it is estimated that 245,000 people are affected by sepsis, which is more than the number of people in the UK who suffer a myocardial infarction or heart attack. These individuals are obviously all very unwell and many will present to A&E. Around 5% of all emergency admissions in the UK are due to sepsis. Given the severity and rapid course of the disease, the mortality rate associated with sepsis is high. Around 20% of patients will not survive, leading to 52,000 deaths per year in the UK alone. That is five people in every single hour of every single day. More people die of sepsis in the UK than die of breast, bowel and prostate cancer combined. These figures are also highly likely to even be underestimates, since a proportion of the more than 1.7 million patients suffering from a severe infection in England every year are actually likely to have uncoded sepsis. But the human burden of sepsis doesn't stop there. Many of those who survive suffer permanent, life-changing after-effects. These can be really debilitating and can include post-traumatic stress disorder, cognitive problems, chronic pain and continued organ dysfunction. So even if a person's life is saved, the burden of survival could mean that sufferers are unable to return to normal and may not be able to return to work. In the UK, every year, sepsis is estimated to cost between £1.5 and £2 billion in direct costs to the NHS alone. 
This is more than the annual cost of asthma, which costs more than 1.1 billion in the UK. With the added costs to the wider economy, the bill increases to somewhere between 11 and 15.6 billion. So the burden of sepsis is really high, both in human and economic terms. The reality is that much of this high burden is avoidable. If it is caught early enough, sepsis is easily treatable. The key is early diagnosis and timely administration of treatment. So, how is sepsis identified? Sepsis can look different in different people and symptoms might present as flu-like, gastroenteritis or a chest infection. Not everyone will have a high temperature, especially in the very early stages. Sepsis presents differently in children than in adults, but experts have condensed down the key things to look out for, so it's really important to be alert for the different elements shown on this slide. Patients with certain risk factors are more likely to develop sepsis. This includes the very young and the very old who are at risk, as are women who are pregnant, have recently given birth or miscarried. Treatments for other diseases can also increase the risk of developing sepsis. For example, people undergoing chemotherapy or those who are taking steroids or immunomodulating drugs are at greater risk. Also at risk are people who have a break in the skin, for example, an indwelling catheter, recent surgery or any kind of wound. Early warning scores like MUS2 are widely used in UK hospitals and can be very useful. A MUS2 score of greater than 5 should always trigger a screen for sepsis. Finally, the red flag system developed by the UK Sepsis Trust in collaboration with the Royal Colleges and NHS England, and since endorsed by NICE, can also be a useful way to assess a patient's risk of deterioration. This red flag system is understood to be used by around 90% of the hospitals in the UK. The red flag system is not a formal diagnostic tool for sepsis. It's a set of criteria which can be rapidly measured, which suggests it's highly likely that the patient has a degree of organ dysfunction and it empowers health professionals of any level of seniority to act. If you identify one or more red flags, you should assume the patient has sepsis. This red flag empowers you to act immediately it's a tool designed to help you to get on and ensure the patient gets the treatment that they need. NICE guidelines also include a series of amber flags, less urgent in terms of triggering action, but still very important in terms of understanding the patient's risk of deterioration. The red flags shown here are the ones for adults and children over the age of 12, and they include a new or altered mental state, being unable to stand or being collapsed, being unable to catch their breath or a high respiratory rate, skin that is very pale, mottled, ashen or blue, a rash that doesn't fade when pressed, recent chemotherapy or not having passed any urine in the previous 18 hours. If a person presents with signs or symptoms that indicate a possible infection, always think, could this be sepsis? Sepsis can progress very rapidly. It's so important to have a high index of suspicion and act immediately on any of those suspicions. Once you have identified that a patient may have sepsis and may be at risk of deterioration, urgent action is required. NICE and the Sepsis Trust have published guidelines for the management of these patients. Any patient with a red flag of sepsis should be urgently admitted to hospital wherever possible. Once admitted, treatment should be initiated immediately. Treatment is described by the sepsis 6 treatment protocol shown here in pink. The most important point is that the items shown in the sepsis 6 treatment protocol are the initial required treatment and should all be carried out within the first hour after admission. Time really is of the essence where sepsis is concerned. Briefly, given the potential for rapid deterioration, any red flag is a trigger to involve a senior clinician. Oxygen should be given if the oxygen saturations of your patient are less than 92%. IV access should be obtained and blood samples, which should include a lactate, need to be taken and sent for analysis. Intravenous antibiotics should be started immediately and these should be a broad spectrum antibiotic administered at the maximum appropriate dose for your patient and according to your hospital's local protocol. Intravenous fluids may be necessary and finally the patient must be carefully and frequently monitored, for example by using the news 2 system to assess their risk of further deterioration. Since its inception, the Sepsis 6 treatment protocol has grown in popularity. 
and is now used in more than 99% of UK hospitals as a tool to help ensure appropriate treatment. Since these tools and guidelines have been developed and rolled out nationwide, they have had a really positive effect, especially on the awareness of sepsis. Three quarters of CCGs are now prioritising sepsis and nearly a third of CCGs have a sepsis lead identified in 75% of their practices. The rate of screening for sepsis in emergency departments has risen from 78 to 91% between 2015 and 2018. This is probably linked with the rise in timely antibiotic administration, which has risen from 63 to 80% over the same period. These results are very positive and they indicate a higher level of awareness, not just of sepsis as a diagnosis, but also of the appropriate way to manage these individuals. Greater awareness of sepsis is driving more diagnosis of sepsis in the UK. Back in 2010, around 90,000 cases of sepsis were being officially diagnosed. By 2017-18, this had more than doubled to almost 200,000 diagnoses per year. The cumulative effect of these changes are yet to be fully understood, but some early analysis carried out by the UK Sepsis Trust has suggested that the mortality rate of people diagnosed with sepsis has been falling over recent years. But what about the risk of sepsis in wound management? Wound care practitioners should be aware that patients with any type of wound, including chronic wounds, are at risk of sepsis. This is all linked to risk factors. If we bring to mind a typical patient with a chronic wound, we would normally envisage an older person, possibly frail, who is often on a lot of other medications, some of which interfere with wound healing. They often have a lot of comorbidities too, some of which interfere with their immune system. And not forgetting the wound itself, they obviously all have a break in the skin. These are all factors for an increased risk of sepsis. When sepsis develops in people with chronic wounds, it doesn't spring from nowhere. Where sepsis is wound related, the wound will have progressed along the infection spectrum. When microbes in a colonised wound proliferate to a point where the patient's immune system can't keep them in check, then early signs of infection develop. These have been covered in a previous module. If this isn't recognised or treated effectively, it can develop into a local wound infection and can potentially lead to spreading infections, for example, cellulitis or osteomyelitis and can then go on to develop into sepsis. The trick is in the appropriate and timely recognition and management of wound bioburden and infection. This is integral to the avoidance of morbidity due to sepsis. If you can get on top of any local wound infection, then wound related sepsis can be avoided. It's as simple as that. So when assessing your patient's wounds, be vigilant. There are lots of resources available describing the content of this module in more detail. The UK Sepsis Trust is a charity that exists to fight sepsis, stop preventable deaths and support those affected by sepsis and their website has lots of useful information. NICE has also published guidance around the recognition, diagnosis and early management of sepsis which is freely available from their website. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the quiz questions. Well done, we are now at the end of the module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you learnt and apply it in your daily practice. It might be useful to think of some patients in your care and reflect on how you might manage these going forward. If you are on the NMC register, then please click the link in the description below to access a copy of the revalidation form which allows for deeper reflection. Adding to this reflection will mean that you'll be able to claim extra CPD time. Thank you for your time today. Please remember to look at the other sections of the Smith and Nephew channel to access additional modules to help you on your learning journey.